Hello, I'm Violeta Cabello and I am a researcher at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. Um, and I've been part of the MAGIC project that has a strong presence in this conference. So this is the third talk uh, in a session uh, called Addressing Ambiguity in Participatory Processes of the PNES. Uh, five and uh, I would like to share uh, some ideas as to about how uh, narratives and analysis of narratives um, is useful uh, to work with ambiguity in the sense that Marcella uh, just presented in extended peer communities or um, um, participatory integrated assessment processes that I, in this talk I will take indistinctively and this is obviously subject to discussion. Uh, so I will be sharing some insights from a case study I've developed with other colleagues uh, from MAGIC that are also present in the, in the conference. Um, so first of all about narratives. So when we started MAGIC, I realized that we had our own internal ambiguity uh, in that we were using different uh, definitions of narratives. And at some point, uh, Thomas Volker and other colleagues came up with uh, this very precise definition about narratives as pieces of information uh, that um, uh, present a sequential order or events with subjects that have their own rationales and used to lead uh, uh, present um, uh, causal relationships between what's, what the problems and solutions are. Um, late in the project, I, I came to, to, to read this paper of Passion and Ison, and, I, uh, and they provide this other definition that I love, not only because it's very short, uh, knowing in action, but also I think uh, it's useful when uh, thinking about uh, participatory venues and what happens uh, in there and uh, in, in, in their perspective. So when you, in the very act of communicating and of narrating your perspective, you are creating uh, knowledge. And when you have different people, um, th those different narratives come to interact and, and all these considerations that Marcella presented play a role in what comes out of there. So how does this, uh, these ideas of, of narratives or, uh, can be applied uh, to analyze ambiguity and address it in, in, in participatory processes. So um, uh, in MAGIC we've been uh, applying this um, framework or approach that uh, is called quantitative storytelling uh, that uh, in a nutshell is a mixed method uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, mixed combination of uh, narrative, qualitative narrative analysis and quantitative uh, analysis of social metabolism uh, with a nexus, water, energy and food nexus perspective. Um, so we applied that approach to assess uh, policies and innovations that are relevant for the nexus. In our case, and in the case of study I'm bringing, we were assessing the role of uh, a new project of uh, wastewater reclamation uh, for irrigation in, a, in an agricultural area in the north of uh, Tenerife, which is uh, an island in, in Spain. So the idea was to create a, a yeah, a, uh, a knowledge co-production co or co-creation process with different actors uh, in the island. So what did we do? Uh, so the process um, ran for almost uh, a year uh, along 2019 and we started with a set of interviews with uh, people from, from representing different knowledge domains in the nexus so from water uh, food and energy domains and all, we also conducted field surveys to farming systems in order to collect quantitative data about uh, uh, um, yeah, the, the, the metabolism of those uh, farms. And then we had a period of cooking that information that on one hand, an assignment uh, to um, identify the narratives called in the interviews. And on the other hand was to um, link uh, the narratives with the quantitative analysis so that useful information could be uh, generated for 
our final stage that was a workshop with uh, almost 40 actors of the area uh, of the local area and also of the island where we conducted the the assessment and um yeah so um from the interviews, we immediately observed that when we were asking actors about what are the issues, what are the problems that reclaimed water uh, is supposed to address. So we obtained different answers, different framings, and uh, the main promoters of this innovation were uh, public authorities uh, responsible for water work governance, and they were defending uh, reclaimed water as a mean to alleviate uh, pressures on, on groundwater, and also uh, sectoral competition, because the island has a, a very intense um, touristic and also agricultural activity and, and, and water resources are scarce. So um, yeah, so sectors were competing. And then on the other hand, we had uh, other actors, uh, in, in some cases, powerful actors like private water owners questioning uh, some of this framing. And, and, and in this case, like there is no aquifer overdraft is only about sectoral competition. And also we had other uh, perspectives like researching researchers saying, oh, but this is a more complex problem, you know, and, 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 and this is just a technological fix that doesn't solve the issue. We, across the farmers, we also found different positions. And it was really interesting that uh, uh, depending on whether uh, they, 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 they were for the use of uh, reclaimed water or not, um, they were using uh, arguments that were opposite for the different characteristics of reclaimed water. So the price is more expensive versus the price is cheaper. Water quality is worse better than is, uh, uh, versus is, is better. And, and, and also there are no impacts associated with the use of these resources versus there are. No? So we, we say, oh, this is very interesting. This is ambiguity. No? So there are different framings. So we use, and I don't have the time to go in depth in that, but we, we, we run a lot of um, quantitative analysis to explore uh, these differences. So what farming systems are for in what are against and why. So, and we saw that there were some farming systems with water, cheap water, groundwater at a very good quality, and obviously they didn't need these resources. And on the other hand, um, there were some with uh, uh, real problems with the groundwater quality and uh, or price. So I think that the most important for this uh, talk is that the way we designed the workshop. So first, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we did a, a field visit where we uh, visited uh, people uh, representing these different positions. So first we visited the wastewater treatment plant and they provided information about the quality, about the price uh, and about their, their perspective of these resources. Then we visited a farmer that was against the use of this water and then another one that was for the use of this water. So this is narratives as knowing in action now. Uh, and, um, after that, we presented our, the results from our analysis. So we say, this that we just observed, we have also seen it, you know, through our uh, interviews and our uh, survey. So we have different positions. So what do we do with that? And then we move to group assessments uh, of, uh, of the, of the innovation and what we did was to organize the assessment through the different aspects, characteristics of, of the innovation that were contested. So the price, the quality, the contribution to aquifer conservation and so on in different scenarios. And um, as an outcome, I think the main outcome of this process was an enhanced uh, social acceptance of the technology uh, among farmers, despite the researchers uh, a skeptic view of technological fixes. And I will come back to this point later. So I think it, it was very important, the, 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 the narratives that we saw in the, in the field visit, not like, like having uh, direct information uh, from different people uh, was very useful. And as well, the type of analysis that we presented, I think that addressed some of the uncertainties 
uh, uh, that we had identified by adding new information that the actors didn't have. And we observed that uh, there was high convergence among most of the actors in all the, the working groups. And uh, I think this was partially due as well that the different uh, uh, perspectives were not evenly represented. So most people in the workshop were in favor of the use of reclaimed water. And this connects very well with the questions from Marcella. No? So who comes and how the different perspectives are represented and what are the relations between them. So there was only one farmer in, uh, in the workshop that was against the use of reclaimed water. And, and he was obviously in a minority position. Uh, so to conclude, just with some learnings, I think that uh, narratives in the way we have applied it in this um, uh, case study are helpful in, in elucidating ambiguities and showing that there are different framings and, 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 and in bringing those into participatory spaces where we can discuss and reflect over, the, over those differences. Uh, procedural aspects matter. I think this is a very basic uh, conclusion, but I think it is important. Like the questions that were posed by Marcella are important and I don't think that we took them uh, into account enough. Uh, yeah. And then be aware of your narrative. It's a comment about, yeah, how we were, like, as I said, a part of the research uh, team, uh, uh, we have a skeptical um, position with technologies as solutions for environmental problems. So at some point, uh, we had this reflection that we were all the time trying to emphasize, oh, but we are different and we have differences and like amplifying pluralism. And while most people there in that uh, uh, workshop uh, agreed, no? So this idea of, yeah not uh, it, it is sometimes it is not necessary to force consent and and that's all uh, thank you very much and hope to have a la discussion later <laughs>